Father God to God and pray right now. Pray again, dear. Thank you, Jesus. Pray again, dear. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning. We bless your name. We lift you up, Lord. What a mighty God we serve and we bless you. Jesus. Angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. You are high and lifted up. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, we are not worthy of you, Lord. We want to give you thanks, Lord, for bringing us here in your house, Lord, Lord, daily to worship you. Because, Lord, not to waste time. But, Lord, to just come here with our worship, with our praise, with thanksgiving unto you. You have done so much for us, whereof we are glad. And we want to thank you, Lord, that we are alive and well in our right minds, God, where we can lift you up today. We bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Lord, we pray for the proceedings of this service today, that your purpose will be done. That, Lord God, your name will be lifted up. That, Lord, your name will be praised, Jesus, in our midst. Wash us, Lord. Cleanse us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Purify our hearts and our minds and our thoughts. Hallelujah, as we give you thanks this morning. Hallelujah, all those who are streaming in online, I pray God they will feel your presence where they are. Oh, Jesus, we pray, oh God, for our bishop and his family. Continue to touch them. God, continue to use them for your kingdom, for your glory. As they continue to follow you, God, help us to be obedient, Lord God, to them. Hallelujah, I pray for our leaders also. God and their families continue to touch them as they bear up our bishop, Lord. Jesus, use them for your glory, oh God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord, I pray for the moderation of this service, that you continue, Lord, to just touch. Touch our moderator. Touch, Lord, our singers, Lord God. Touch the voices. Touch the musicians, their fingers. Hallelujah. And their feet as they play. Lord, touch the ushers, oh God as they do their part, Jesus. Hallelujah. Each and every saint. God, help us, Lord, to bind our hands and our heart together today as we worship you. Let us not look to the left or to the right, but to be focused on you today, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you are who we are worshiping. Take full control. And we pray for the unsaved, that God, as they are here or as they tune in, that, Lord, they'll be touched, Lord God, that, Lord God, they'll have a heart that they'll want to serve you and to serve you, Lord God, for the, to the end. Have thine own sweet way. Anoint us, Lord, as we look to you, Lamb of God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Let me hear everybody say, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. We read that scripture this morning. I, you know, really enjoy this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. We're going to read from 1 to the end. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'll wait until you find it. Praise God. We're going to read alternately. I'll start and then you follow. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. I'll start. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things are, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge, 
For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. But meat condemneth us Commendeth. not to God. For neither if we eat or we the better, neither if we eat not are the worst. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which hath knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Let's read together. Wherefore, if meat make any brother to offend, make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. Praise God. This scripture is really about us thinking about our brother and our sisters, right? It's not all about us. We have to consider our brethren. And if we have the love of God, then yes, we will do that. Amen? Praise God. We're going to sing the song 195 from our hymnals. Oh, I, uh, oh, I want to see him. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crypts and flow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on, through Him I must win. Oh, I want to see Him, to look upon His face, there to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's our path.
God. Indeed, today is a good day. Hallelujah. This is a day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Can we bless the Lord, somebody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, it is because of his mercies where we are not consumed this morning, church. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. Praise God. Isn't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Yes. To give us so many blessings on this earth. this morning. God is still God. Hallelujah. In spite of our circumstances this morning, God is still God. Hallelujah. Jesus. And our praise should be, regardless of our circumstance, our praise should be the same. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated as, as I in, in, invite our bishop to come and to greet this lovely congregation in Jesus' name. Amen. And can we praise the Lord, everybody? Come on, we praise the Lord, everybody. Put your hands together and give him a clap offering of praise. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. And we magnify the great God of heaven. Really want to greet those of us who are out this morning in the sanctuary. Amen. In the wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So very good to see all of you i greet you saints of god i greet you visitors in the house the lord bless you i look right into the the camera and i really want to greet amen i really want to greet all those who have joined us 
via the World Wide Web. I greet you too in the precious name of Jesus. Those from the Faith Apostolic Ministries family, amen. It's not your group, so you're tuning at home. We want to greet you, amen, in Jesus' name. God is a good God. The Lord has done great things for me, according to one writer, whereof I am glad. And we can borrow those words and apply them to our own lives. God is good. If the Lord have been good to you, put your hands together and give him a clap offering of praise. Amen. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Amen. Um, it's drawing near to the end of the year and we sit here today and we reflect back at what transpired from January coming down and you know it's just a good thing to reminisce and as we look back can't we all say in spite of it all I am still here in spite of it all we are still here and I'd like us just to, everybody, just stand one more time. One more time. Amen. And we're just going to lift our hands. The song says, thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks. Amen. For all that you have done. And it's not the end of the year yet. But we don't have to wait for December 31 to say thanks. We can say thanks now. And we can say thanks again later on. And I just feel that we should just join our voices together. Amen. Everybody, as we say thanks to the great God who has kept us. Amen. We are all here. And we ought to say thanks. Come on, singers. Thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks. For all. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Sing it again. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all. all you Hallelujah. Done. For all you have done. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. Oh yes, we're going to do it just one more time, I think. I give you thanks, everybody. Let's express thanks to him. Oh, thank God. I am so blessed. My soul. my soul is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you that. Hallelujah. Come on, we lift our hands, everybody. I really want everybody's hands to be up. Just wave them to heaven. Just tune in to heaven. Let the Lord know that you appreciate him. Hallelujah. That he's worthy. He's Lord of your life. And you thank him for keeping you. One more time, just go on that chorus. Amen. With your hands up as we sing it. Keep them up as we glorify God. Yes, I give you thanks. Thanks, everybody, with your hands up. My God. Oh, yes. Oh my God, my soul is at rest. My God, I give you, give you thanks. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. 
praise God and the Lord bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Just before I take my seat, I really wasn't here last week, Sister Sheila, so I didn't personally get to show my appreciation, I believe. Um, amen. Amen. Uh, but you will be here. This is not the last one, right? Or it is. Amen. But I know we prayed last week and the Lord bless you. And I'm going to miss you. I, I have to say publicly, it, as I said it privately, I'm going to miss you, Sister Shields. But although you're going to be there, amen, we're still going to be connected. Amen. We are, we are a part of all the teams and that will not change. And so the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. His hands guide you as you go. And we certainly will be talking again. Amen. Praise God. I really want to appreciate, you know, I wasn't around last week Sunday because the week before that was my anniversary. And then on Wednesday, again, was my birthday, my, my 55th birthday. I wasn't around. And I want to, in that, those times that I was not around, you realize, as usual, everything just went on. Amen. We had Bible studies right through. I, I, wanna ju I just feel this morning to take the time out to appreciate all our leaders. I want to, amen, I really want to appreciate them. I feel to do that this morning. I can't single out any, and yet I will single out three just for this morning. So this morning is the morning I single out three. I appreciate, amen, Deacon Rohan Smith. I appreciate, Minister, which is Minister Rohan Smith. I appreciate Minister Andrew Martin. I appreciate Minister Marlon Bailey. You know that these three men have, and you notice that even when I took a break, Bible study went on. And one of these three men have been in the slot just carrying on. And to God be the glory. Yesterday was our church retreat or heads of department the leaders for the different departments retreat and it's an all-day affair i had to be in trelawney for sister grant's thanksgiving service and guess what the retreat was not rescheduled the retreat went on and it was chaired by none other than minister marlon bailey and we had a great time they had a great time and decisions were made and i really am happy that we have men that are standing in the gap so that the business of the kingdom can go on irrespective of what. And I want to say to God be the glory for all the other leaders, Minister Shane and all the others that are not here this morning. I appreciate you all. God bless you. And I just felt to publicly say that today. The Lord bless you. Let's continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness. Again, to all the visitors that are here, we want to bless you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for making the Faith Chapel this morning. The Lord bless you. Let's continue to worship him in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness. Also, um, I observe that we all have our masks and the protocol allows for those that are around the mic singing and probably like myself speaking to you know pull it down for a while to allow us to conduct the service but we want to ask and i want to ask you personally brethren when we have the mask on it's good that you have it around you know your neck but we're going to ask you going forward once you're there keep it on bring it up across very important. They have actually asked for that to happen and they have reiterated it in terms of the leadership of the land. We want to make sure that we are doing our part. Amen. In following through. And so I'm going to really ask you, if every now and then you have to take a breather, but bring it back up quickly. You have to keep it on. It's very important. Amen. So not below the nose, no, you know, above the nose. Amen. God bless you. I know it's a little bit uncomfortable. But that's the environment in which we are operating in. And we are soldiers and we can do it. The Lord bless you in the name of the Lord. Praise God. God bless you. Could we all stand to our feet, everybody? Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, I feel like running this morning. 
I feel like skipping. I feel like praising the Lord. Amen, somebody. I feel like, I feel like running. Yes. Skipping. skipping. Praise the Lord. Oh, what he has done for me. He has said.
your name this morning. Lord, we magnify your great name, Lord Jesus. You are God this morning, Lord Jesus. You are Lord of Lords. You are King of Kings. Jesus, we put you in a rightful place this morning, God. Lord, we cast our crown at your feet this morning, King Jesus. And we hail you as Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You wrote my name. Way up.
Lord, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you this morning, Lord, that I'm a part of the family of God. Mighty God, I've been washed in his fountain this morning. Amen, somebody. I've been cleansed by his blood. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Joint here with Jesus as we travel along. My God, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ushers, ushers. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name this morning. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Could you just bow your heads while I pray? Lord Jesus, we give you thanks, mighty God, for a time like this, Lord Jesus, a privilege to Come before your mighty God to offer up our praise and giving, mighty God, our sacrifices, Lord. God, as the ushers go forth to collect a portion of what you've blessed us with, mighty God, we pray this morning that you breathe upon it, mighty God. Lord, I pray this morning that you stretch it, multiply it, mighty God. God, let it cover the needs of his kingdom, mighty God, Jesus. Bless the every hand that stretch forth to give. Bless those who don't have this morning, Lord, but have a desire. We ask this and more in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. And during the collection of the offering, the praise team will be ministering. Praise God. in your brain.
praise God, praise God, praise God. What an assurance we have as people of the Most High God that we can call upon Him to wrap us in His arms, to embrace us, to hold us tight. I recall a song says, hold me because I'm afraid of the storm and we can depend upon our God to wrap us and hold us tight and protect us from every storm. What a great God and what a great privilege we have. Praise God. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Sister Shields, we did mention earlier on that we appreciate you and although you're going to be going, you're, you're still a part of us. But I'm going to ask you to come because we do have two presentations to make to you. You mean so much to us. You were a part of the choir. You were a part of altar workers and the ladies fellowship and all. And uh, today the choir, amen, through, I believe it is, who will do the presentation for the choir? Brother, Ma Brother McGregor. Is going to come, Sister Shields, and then right afterwards, Amen, Sister Ivan Rowe, Amen, on behalf of, well, altar workers, the ladies' fellowship, and Sister Shields, a very quiet, very, Amen, humble, unassuming young lady. And she didn't even know that this was planned for her, but just for you to know, Sister Shields. And of course, yes, you can cry. Nothing is wrong with that. Sister Shields is crying. And we, we, I know some of us are going to be crying too because Sister Shields has been with us for 30 odd years. If I can recall, almost a little after I was here or before, I'm not sure, but way back, I, as far back as I can remember, Sister Shields have been with us. And so we want you to know, Sister Shields, that we love you, all of us. We appreciate you. We appreciate how you were involved with us. And what these groups are doing represents something small. But it is the best for now that we can offer in terms of something tangible. But our hearts and our prayers are with you. And the Lord bless you as you go. Brother McGregor, come. Followed by Sister Yvonne in Jesus' name. I praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, Michelle's. Can I invite us to just stand, everyone, and just put our hands together for this wonderful, beautiful, faithful young lady. More than 30 years, rest. This lady has served on the, the choir the ministry. You, you may be seated, except all our choir members. All our choir members in the congregation and the rostrum keep standing. And uh, we want to let you know how deeply we appreciate the service that you've given to the ministry over these many years. Sister Shields knows to sing nothing else but alto. Amen? And she was a strong part of the altar power section. Amen, choir members? And she has given a distinguished service, unbroken. Sister Shields is known for her punctuality for service. As far back as I can recall, she is never late. Never. Right, Sister Nursing? Never. And uh, I want to let you know how much we love you, how much we're going to miss you and appreciate you. It was my pleasure working with you over my period. And it is a pleasure for all the members. I can speak on behalf of Brother Andre, who's not here, Sister Nikisha, who's not here. They love you, they appreciate you, they want to let you know how precious you are to them and to the ministry. And can I have all the choir members in the congregation say amen? So we agree. We love you, we appreciate you. Here's a small token on behalf of the music department. And we want to let you know we will miss you. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for her one more time. Don't leave yet. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? 
Can we praise the Lord one more time? Thank you, Jesus. Um, Sister Shields, I'm here to present a token to her on behalf of the altar workers, also the Ladies Fellowship. Um, Sister Shields worked very well with children at the altar. Is there anybody that is here who is filled with the Holy Ghost that Sister Shields prayed for? Can I see you stand, please? Thank you, Jesus. Anybody? In it? Thank you, Jesus. If Sister Shields prayed for you when you got the Holy Ghost, can I see you stand? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Sister Shields, on behalf of the altar worker, we want to present this to you as a token of our love. We do appreciate you and we are going to miss you so very much. But we ask that wherever you go, you take the name of Jesus with you and you continue to serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Also, there's a token from the Ladies Fellowship. We just want to present it to you as well and for you to know that we dearly love you and we are going to miss you so much. But may the Lord Jesus be with you wherever you go. In Jesus' name. everybody praise the lord one more time let me invite the parents and, and child soraya summer harrison and renika andrea paul child is here, Chevanese Miller, and you make your way up. Deacon Smith. Amen, amen. Let me invite the church to stand. Amen. We stand in unison with these parents. You know, you have a lot of support in the church. See everybody standing here supporting you. Amen. We're not doing a ritual here, but we dedicating these childs, these children unto the Lord. You know. Amen. Let us turn in our Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter six. And we'll be reading from verse three through to verse nine. 
And it reads thus, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that he may increase mightily, as the Lord thy God of thy father hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and upon thy gates. Amen, amen. Amen. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. And as we dedicate these little ones, we want to invite the entire church to pray. Amen. Amen. Let us just cry out unto the Lord. Father, we, Father, we come to you. And thank you again. This morning, Lord, we want to thank you grace. for you your love so wonderful. and for your mercy. So kind, so yes, Jesus, we want to thank you for little Soraya, Lord, dedicate Jesus that you have brought into this world, Lord Jesus, Renika, for such a time name. as this. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we present her to you right great, now, with great joy. and we put her we into your hands, here. Lord Delightful Jesus God. Christ. To present Jesus them to you. Lord, we Lord, ask that God that you Father cover her yes. right now, oh, Lord, Father, God. that you yes. build yes. an edge around her right now, Jesus, that you will hide her underneath your blood. Lord, let your banner over her be over her, Lord. Jesus, we pray, God, that you will touch her, God, with a special touch. That, that you, that you will anoint her from the crown of her head and to the sole of her feet. God, as she grows up, Lord, and as she traverses in this life, we pray that you will be with her, God, in her going out, God, and in her coming. We pray, God, for the caregivers. We pray, God, for those who will play a major role in her life, God, that they will be a positive influence, Jesus. God, we pray, God, for our parents, Jesus. Will God, rest that upon you will cover them, her God. God. That God. you will God. save now, them, Jesus. As we that you will help them, God. Her, Lord. To teach her your principles Jesus. and your status. We pray, Lord, Jesus God. Christ, that mind, you will body. provide her good all health, abilities God. that she will Give need. Her good health, Lord, 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 everything God. that Jesus she will be in need of. We pray, God, from this and point in time, and that you will supply. Oh God, we pray, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, that, Christ, that, you that God, you will this continue to strengthen her as she develops, and that God, you will keep her child of God, in the child of the King. Your hands. That you're we the one lift her up to you right now, here, Jesus. Oh God. Gave and her we life. Give Hallelujah. her back to you. Hallelujah. In the so name of Jesus. For them, we pray, oh God, we say, God that no God plague will come nigh your dwelling, spirit, oh God, and that you will keep her in the hollows of your today, hands. Oh God, yes, Jesus, as we bless them let your perfect give them will back be done. To you for your glory right now, oh God, as we give the Sariah back to you. Anoint in the name, in the name of, Jesus of Jesus Christ. Christ. We give you praise in and Jesus glory. Name. Let thy will be done in Jesus' name.
just want to be where you are. Him. We have sung his praises. Hallelujah. Now comes time to hear a word from God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Ah. I'm hungry for a word this morning. Church, are you hungry for a word this morning? Hallelujah. At this time, it is my pleasure to invite Sister Romaine Murray to come on to Say what God has laid on our heart. Amen, everybody. Could you receive our church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, could we all bow our heads right now, church? Join in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, God, you know, Sister Romaine, by name and by number this morning, God. You fashion her into your likeness, mighty God. God, as she stands between you and your people right now, Lord Jesus. God, I pray right now that you draw out that which you have placed within her, mighty God. Hallelujah. God, this morning, use her as a conduit, mighty God, to minister unto your people this morning, God. Jesus, use her tongue. Hallelujah. Use our personality this morning, mighty God. And let your name be glorified, mighty God. Jesus, have your way this morning. In Jesus' name. No other name but the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord, everybody. I'm going to invite you no to stand. No other name but the name of the Lord. No other name, no other name but the name of Jesus. He's worthy, He's worthy of glory. Worthy. Worthy. 
believe that this morning I want you to just lift your hands and worship you. There's no other name. us to lift our hands to the God who is worthy of all glory, the God who is worthy of all honor, the God who is worthy of our praise. Just lift your hands and, and just say something to him. Just exalt that name of Jesus this morning. God is an awesome God and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Just worship him. 20 more seconds of worship. Invite the presence of the Lord into your heart. He's already here and I just want him to shake the foundation on which you're standing. I just want him to do his work in you today. That at the end of it, after leaving this place, after leaving the spot of ground that you're standing on, it would have been a very firm foundation. I'm going to ask us to turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're going to be reading from verses 11 to 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're reading from verses 11. I'm going to read to verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11 to 17. It says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I'm going to read verse 11 one more time. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Bless the Lord, everybody. You may be seated. And I'm going to speak to you from the topic in the form of a question this morning. Is your foundation sure? And I'm going to ask you to turn to the person beside you on either side. And I want you to ask them the question, is your foundation sure? Ensure that you ask persons on opposing side, is your foundation sure? All right? So now that you have asked the question, we're going to talk a little bit. So this, we know our foundations, right? And if we're going to be building a house, we know that the strength of the building, or any building at all, lies in its foundation. So the foundation is what holds the structure together, and it keeps the structure upright. In laying any foundation, the builder has to ensure that it is dug at the correct depth. 
and that the footing of it is properly installed with the steelwork and the other very vital material like the cement and the stones so that it is firm enough to hold the weight of the structure that you're putting on it. If not, it would only be a matter of time before it crumbles. A poorly constructed foundation, however, can prove dangerous to the owner of the building and to the occupants that are in it. It is with that knowledge that I stand and put this question before you this morning. Is your foundation sure? Think about it. Ten seconds. Is your foundation sure? Consider it like this. You are the temple of the living God. Is your foundation sure? Any foundation that is built must be built to withstand the forces that will come up against it to weaken it. Now think about the forces that have come up against you. And think if your structure is able to withstand. Have you been withstanding the forces that have come up against you? Don't you know that the enemy will seek every avenue that he can get to test the strength and the depth of your foundation? Are you standing on the solid rock? The songwriter puts it perfectly in the song and he says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I'll wholly lean on Jesus' name. And he went further to say, when darkness veils his lovely face, I will rest on Jesus' unchanging grace. In every high and stormy day, my anchor holds within the veil. Now, I looked at what an anchor is, and it says an anchor is a device normally made of heavy material, and it is used to connect a vessel to the bed of the body of water. And why is that? To prevent the craft from drifting. Think about it, and think of where I'm going. The anchor is there to prevent the craft from drifting. Because, guess what? It's going to come up against strong winds. It's going to come up against strong current. It's going to come up against strong forces. So when you sail on the perilous seas of 2020, because some persons have been sailing on the perilous seas of 2020, the experiences of difficulties and hard times that you have had, those tumultuous, very hard and difficult situations that have rocked you to and fro. Your anchor has to hold within the veil. And that anchor is in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Because when you're rocked to and fro, and when the enemy throws his dart at you, sometimes you're going to rock. And sometimes you're going to rock to the next side. But you have to ensure on who your foundation is built. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. So, no wonder the songwriter have to end this way. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. And like the songwriter this morning, I'm singing the same song. And I pray that you're singing that song this morning. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. No matter what comes my way, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So I understand why Paul said in verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay. How can you build upon Jesus Christ that is already our foundation? For no foundation can no man lay other than that which is laid, which is on Jesus Christ. So Jesus in his discourse, in his speech with his disciples, in Matthew 16 verses 13 to 19, when he asked them, whom do you say that I am? Because he asked them what others said. Some said that you're Elias. 
Some said that you're a prophet, but he asked them directly, you're walking with me. Who do you say that I am? And Peter, having received the revelation of him, declared him to be the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus confirmed that the church, the temple, this temple, according to 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 to 20 and also chapter 7 and verse 23 he says we must establish the temple on him because we are bought with a price therefore we are supposed to glorify God in our body and in our spirit which are God's I strongly believe that not only did Peter get the revelation but I believe another person got it I believe Ruth did so I strongly believe that, you know, even though it's not recorded that she got the revelation in the chapters, but I am of the belief that where that foundation is concerned, Ruth got it. And I'm going to show you how. So we know the story already of Ruth, right? She's a Moabite and she was living in the land with Naomi and Orpah, her sister-in-law. And they married two brothers, Marlon and Chilion. And it said that they died. And when they died... Naomi said that she had no other son left. So she sent them away. And Orpah kissed her and went away. But Ruth, it says in chapter 1 and verse 14, she clave to Naomi. And I understood it when I read it. Or when it came to me in a form of revelation this morning. And I said, Lord Jesus, I didn't see it like this. I had something totally different. But this morning when I got up, I got something totally different from the same scripture. And I said, God, I'm going to explore this one this morning. Because I feel that this is where you want me to go. And so, they lost their husband. And, 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 and Ruth clave, according to verse 14, to Naomi. And we all know verse 16, where Ruth, after, in, even in verse 17 and 18, she declared first in 16, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. She was following after something. For where thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. This Moabite is saying, thy people out of Bethlehem shall be my people. And your God out of Bethlehem shall be my God. Where thou diest, there also will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if all but dead, part thee and me. That's verse 17. What Ruth is saying is that the only thing that is going to separate me from you is death. And when I look at it, I say, Jesus, what I want is the foundation we are with. The only thing that is going to separate me from you is death. <laughs> The only thing that is going to separate me from you, Jesus, is death. So I ask the question one more time. Is your foundation sure? I'm going to continue because I have something to tell you. So in verse 18, when Naomi realized that Ruth was not giving up, she was steadfast, the, the scripture says. She refrained from speaking. She, she stopped talking. It don't make no sense because me can't convince her otherwise. Her mind is made up. I am speaking to a set of people who should have a mind made up. Her mind was made up. Remember, she's a Moabite, you know. And she's coming with Naomi to Bethlehem. So they went to Bethlehem. And when she went there, Ruth decided at one point in chapter 2 that she was going to go into the fields to glean corn. And we heard minister... Clovis Jones spoke about the corn season. So she went into the field to glean corn. And while she was there, Boaz came from Bethlehem. It's just so sweet how all of these came from Bethlehem. And what we know about Bethlehem. So Boaz came from Bethlehem. And he went into the field. And when he went there, it, the scripture says he saw a damsel. And he inquired of the men, who is this damsel? I'm now at chapter 10. Verse 10. So he inquired, who is this damsel? And when he inquired, he found out who it is. 
And the scripture went on to say that Ruth found favor in the eyes of Boaz. I'm getting somewhere. She found favor in the eyes of Boaz. And she asked him, who am I? I'm only a stranger. Why you should favor me? Huh? I'm only a stranger. And I'm going to read the scripture as is for you. Jesus. It says in verse 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It had fully been shown to me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people which thou knewest not here hitherto. And then I look at verse 12 and then it says, the Lord recompense thy work, a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou art trust. You know when I read the scripture what it says to me even the last part that says under whose wings thou art come to trust. It shows me that when you trust the Lord as your source as the, the, the foundation that is going to keep you that is going to anchor you then you can be saved. This is a lady who should be mourning her husband, but she came over to Bethlehem because she saw something. There was a something that the scripture did not record, but there was a something about it, and it went on. And I'm going to tell you something that the Lord revealed to me in 2013, in July, in a devotion that I had. And when I got the word, when I was asked last night to speak, and I, and I, I had a word that I got in devotion last week, and I said, Lord, you have a way in my devotion to speak to me. And 2013, this part came. And I had it all along in a book. And all along I've been coming here, the word wasn't for that time. And then when I, last night I tried to put it together. But this morning I saw the different side as I told you. And everything just merged. Then it says, <laughs> hallelujah. It wasn't just a solid rock. Ruth was seeking to establish she was seeking to establish an eternal foundation that Naomi didn't catch wind of what do I mean by that so I'm going to delve a little bit into history and give you a clearer understanding of the foundation Ruth was about to establish so Ruth as we know returned with Naomi and we know all of that and then it says that this king's man as we know him Boaz he saw her and found favor. But here what happened. After the favor and after she asked and said all that she did. And why have you found favor in me? The two got married. And trust me, marriage signifies union, you know. You know that. But hear what? There's just something that have to come together. It's a coming together to build something. And I'm speaking to all classes of people today. It's to build something. It says that they established a foundation together. And so the union brought together, out of it came Obed. Out of Obed came Jesse. Out of Jesse came David. Now let me speak to you. I'm showing you the eternal foundation. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Out of Jesse came David, the king. Remember, David is a king. Bear that in mind. And this is the David out of whose... This is the promise that God gave to David and says that out of you, Shall I establish a throne? Yo. So that means the throne is going to be built forever. And Ruth had a part to play. 
That's why in St. Matthew chapter 1, she was mentioned in the genealogy of Christ. She had to prepare that foundation. She had to be a part of it. So guess what? Her foundation as a Moabite was shaky. And she realized it. And so she decided, I can stay in a sinking ship. I have to step over. I have to step over to this side. I'm stepping over into Bethlehem. Because I have to establish it at that place where the child is going to be born. Hey, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, if David is a king, it means that if Jesus, our sure foundation, came from the line of David, that means he's a king, right? Talk to me. He's a king. Hallelujah, yes. But it didn't stop there. You, we, we all know the story again that David could not have built the temple because his hands were bloody. And so his son Solomon, in 1 Kings chapter 7, he gives us the story of the temple that is being built. And I have to read verse 21 for you. Hallelujah. It says, Solomon was building the temple of God that David, his father, was not permitted to build. And he erected two pillars. Now the pillars are important. The pillars have names. One is called the one that was on the right. Right. It was, it was to the south, and it was called Jachin. J-A-C-H-I-N. It was called Jachin. And it means to establish. It's the same thing that Ruth was doing. And the pillar on the right, on the left rather, to the north, was called Boaz. And Boaz means strength. Now in chapter 2 verse 1, when we were introduced to Boaz, he, it says that Boaz is a mighty man of wealth. That's what the scripture says. So strength, might, the foundation had to be built on strength. So Boaz had to be one of the pillars. And the, the foundation has to be established forever and ever. So it has to be built on Jacob. So what do the two names represent on this pillar? Because pillars are important. They add strength. They give extra um, scaffolding. The foundation is strengthened by pillars. So when I build my temple on strength, the strength, the kingly strength of Jesus Christ, and I'm building it on Jacob, which represents the priestly establishment. It therefore tells me the nature of the God that I serve. The God who Hebrew says, chapter 7, who is a king and a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So this foundation is built on Jesus Christ. No other. No other but Jesus Christ. So it is on Christ the solid rock that the foundation is built. So he represented all of this. So he was declaring to us, it's not just that, you know, after the pillars and all of that, in verse 22, he went on to say something that also struck me. He said, on top of it, the structure that was on top of it had lily work. And we know Jesus to be the lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. So on top of the already foundation that is built on Jacob, that represents his priestly, the priestly aspect of him. And on Boaz that represented the kingly aspect of him. It is on the pillars, nicely decorated, the lily work. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus. What Solomon was doing, he was declaring not just whose temple it was. That's not all he was doing. But the foundation on which the temple was built. 
And then the last part of the clause says, and it closed it in verse 22, it says, so was the work of the pillars finished. Now, if it is built on the right, on Jacob, and on the left to the north, on Boaz, and the structure of it had the lily of the valley. I'm thinking the work has to be finished because the foundation and the structure all represent the God who is going to dwell in it. So it is like saying that this vessel is ready, is prepared for who should occupy it. So when the owner of the house and the occupants or the occupant goes there, he can sit freely in it because it's not a vessel that is made with man's hands. It is a vessel that is made unto God whose builder and maker is the Lord because David's filthy hands couldn't do it. But the hand of the son on whom Jesus declared would, he designed it to be so free and spotless from the shedding of blood and all of that. Hallelujah. So let me break it down for you. I translated it in my own words. Once your foundation is built on Christ, you are bound to last. If he's the anchor that is keeping you, you are bound to last. Once your foundation is built on Christ, there is no question at all, no question that the foundation is durable. Durable meaning it can stretch from everlasting to everlasting. You see, you see the word that I hide in my heart, that I might not sin against God, it is to keep me, you know, you see, when Joshua 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but I shall meditate therein day and night. It is pillars that I'm building up, you know. When Matthew chapter 17 verse 21 says, This kind remains sans shelimore, it cannot go out, but by prayer and fasting. He's saying that I have to build up myself. Not just with prayer, not just with fasting, not just with the meditation of the word, but I have to hide it. Very deep, very deep in the recesses of my heart. And so, if I build my foundation on Christ, of course I have to be durable. Of course I'm built to last. So no matter what storm clouds may rise, no matter how big the test that you're, you're facing is, the peace speaker was on the ship when the sea was calm. He was the anchor that was there. That's why when he was below deck and he was sleeping. The below deck in my estimation represents the bed of the water that he was anchoring. That's how I'm looking at it. That's my interpretation. And he was holding the ship together. So even they, when they were on top and they were screaming and all and they tried to call the master and they wonder why the master was so calm asleep. He's anchoring the ship. He doesn't need to be frantic. We need to realize that is anchoring our ship. And when we're going through the storm, we just need to hold. We just need to rest. Hallelujah. We just need to ensure that the word of God is hidden in our hearts. We have to ensure that according to Jeremiah 23 and verse 12, not Jeremiah, Job, when Job went through all of his tests, he said in chapter 23 verse 12, neither have I gone back from the commandments of my lips. The man has suffered a lot, you know. And then he says, despite it all, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I, Job, have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. What Job is saying is he's anchoring on the word. And he, he realized that despite all that he went through, he could hold safe. And that, that was why his latter end was greater than the first. So I'm speaking to us. So he was the peace speaker on the ship. And he's our problem solver. He's our sure foundation who will keep us anchored once we are built on him. So I ask you the question before I depart one more time. Is your foundation sure today, brethren? I'm speaking to you. I'm asking you the question. 
Is your foundation sure? Unsaved who are hearing me and backsliders alike. If you're hearing me, your foundation is not sure. It is not sure until you are found in him and your faith and your hope are built on him. So ensure today that your foundation is sure and that the only sure foundation is on Jesus Christ, the solid rock. The Lord bless you. And I leave it with you. Is your foundation sure? God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Mori. A sure word from God. Hallelujah. Could you stand to our feet, everybody? Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, uh, does somebody want to stand on the solid rock? Come on, Jesus. Is somebody here this morning who want to make Jesus Christ their foundation? The halters are home this morning. Praise God. I invite you to come. You want to try Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. Altars are open. Come forward.
Lord Jesus, we thank you, great God, for your word this morning. Truly, we have heard a word from you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, may we, God, reflect and meditate upon your word uh, that was delivered this morning, mighty God. Jesus, hallelujah. God, may we use it as a mirror for our lives throughout the course of this week, mighty God. Hallelujah. God, may we search ourselves, King Jesus, uh, and make sure that our hunger is whole, mighty God. Hallelujah. Jesus, God, as we are about to, God, disembark, Lord, to a different place of abode, God, we pray for your journey in mercy, mighty God. Lord, we pray also for those who are on their way for the second service, mighty God, that you grant them journey in mercy, mighty God. Lord, remember the online uh, stream, the online viewers, mighty God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you touch them also, mighty God. Do a work in their lives, King Jesus, as we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, praise God. Hallelujah. 